Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome back to Live from Morning Skate, presented by our friends at FanDuel. We are here at Scotiabank Arena at an optional morning skate today. You can see Michael Bunting's on the ice, Jordy Ben's out there as well. The Leafs preparing for the first game of 2023 tonight against the St. Louis Blues. Nice to see you guys. My name is Jacqueline Dory, joined by the one and only Becky <laughs> Keller, three-time Olympic champion, four-time world champion defenseman for Team Canada. Becky, how was your holidays? It was fantastic. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Did you get a lot of rest? I know I did. I did absolutely nothing the whole time. <laughs> a lot of hockey watching. What a great time of year to watch hockey. The Leafs, the Marlies, and the World Juniors. Was, I love it. It was perfect for a break on the couch, if you will. Uh, so we have a lot to talk about today. We're going to talk about tonight's matchup. We have an update on Rasmus Sandin. And we have uh, some career milestone potential uh, moments yes. for not only Austin Matthews, but also Mitch Marner, but we will get into all of that shortly. I want to start off with the Leafs New Year's Eve win over the Colorado Avalanche because what a game defeating the defending Stanley Cup champions 6-2 to two. and they wanted that game right off the top. The Leafs had a two-goal lead less than 10 minutes into the game but you know just as important Becky was building that lead in the second period and protecting it in the third especially when the Avalanche made that big offensive push. Um, but Becky what was it that stood out most to you? Well so many things and when you score six goals against the defending Stanley Cup champion you know there's a lot of things that have gone well but one of the big things for me was goaltending. Okay. Leafs end of the ice you've got Matt Murray who made 26 saves only allowed two goals had a fantastic game 929 save percentage on the game and out played his counterpart Georgiev at the other end of the ice who ultimately was pulled from the game allowing five goals on 24 shots when you're a goalie you go into the game obviously you want to play well but you want to outplay the guy at the other end of the ice Matt Murray did that yeah and something else I wanted to mention about that game was the Leafs penalty kill three for three just completely shutting down the Avalanche's power play yeah and and I think what I liked about it was you've got McKinnon back in the lineup right. For the abs you could see the fans were so excited to have him back they're trying to hit him on the power play off the flank the Leafs did a great job of shutting that down in particular Justin Hall who read the read the play a number of times was able to get out block the shots get in the way of the shots make things difficult for him and so I thought a very good job of just staying in structure reading the play making the right decisions so many good things happening with the Leafs defense right now. You know, they're keeping goals against to 2.54 per game, which puts them second in the league in that category, which is fantastic. And even better news, Rasmus Sandin back in the lineup. We have not seen him since December 20th when he left the Tampa Bay Lightning game with a neck injury. So he missed about four games. And you know what? Obviously, the blue line missed him. So can you talk a bit about how that changes things up uh, for, you know, Keith today having to make some decisions, you know, especially when you consider that Connor Timmins and Jordy Ben did such a great job while, uh, you know, filling the holes with all those injuries. It's been a revolving door on yes. the blue line this season for the Leafs. So they've become very accustomed to making the lineup changes and just rolling with the punches now obviously this speaks volumes to the depth of the defense on this team I think it was almost a blessing in disguise all the injuries because you saw Rasmus Sandin you saw Lilligren take on big minutes and their confidence grew with it Sandin quarterback the, the, the first unit of power play, power play for a number of games most likely we'll see him slot into the second unit but I think again it speaks volumes to the depth when you can take a guy like Connor Timmons out of the lineup who has eight points in right. the last 11 games you've got a lot of guys that can fill the roles when needed and that's going to be really important I think going down the stretch. He's done so well I really enjoyed watching Timmins I don't know about you guys let us know what you thought of Timmins performance because not much more that you can ask from a guy like that at this point in the season with so much depth on the blue line like you said Becky. Um, and this is also great news, Rasmus Sandin's return anyway is great news because January is going to be busy. 14 games in the month of January for the Maple Leafs, but great news for us is that 10 of those are here at Scotiabank Arena, and Toronto has a 13-2-3 record at home this year. So Becky, how much of an opportunity is the month of January for the Leafs to really stock up on points and, you know, get a strong foothold in the Atlantic Division? Well, it's a great opportunity yeah. for the Leafs. Clearly a team that loves to play at home. Boston and Tampa are the only two other teams in the NHL with more home wins right now. So 10 games at home in the month of January maybe gives the Maple Leafs an opportunity to try to make up some ground on those two divisional rivals that are sitting ahead of Tampa, but make up a little ground on the Boston Bruins. Yeah.
Yeah, well, that all starts tonight. There's something about Leafs Nation that just adds some magic to the arena. No wonder the Leafs do so well at home. Um, and, you know, someone who will need that tonight is Austin Matthews because there's a potential career milestone to hit with 500 career points. Last Saturday, we saw him score one goal and get one assist for his 499th career point. So will he do it tonight? He could. And go figure, he wouldn't be the only one. Well, Mitch Marner's sitting at 497 points. The two of them have just stayed neck and neck throughout the course of their career, which is pretty amazing. Could they both do it tonight? Marner needs three points. He needs a big night, but certainly not inconceivable given what these two can do and how they can put up points. Can you imagine? I mean, that would be pretty special. And you know what? I think it's going to happen. I'm going to put it out there. And that brings me to FanDuel first goal of the game because my pick is the one and only Austin <laughs> Matthews. I think he will, in fact, get his 500th career point tonight. And the poet in me says it's going to be a goal, and it's going to be the first Maple Leaf goal of 2023. Oh, what do you think? I agree. I think Matthews is going to get on the scoreboard tonight for sure. I just don't think it's going to be the first goal. Okay. I'm going with Yarn Croc for that. That's so a great I'm choice. Going with the guy that's holding the hot stick right now, and since coming back from injury, he's been hot. He's had three points the last time they faced St. Louis, a goal and two assists. I think he's going to get on the board first tonight. Yeah, and he's on a five-point or a five-game point streak, rather. Um, had a, a great couple weeks. Um, can you talk about what he's been doing well and what he'll have to do to extend that point streak to six games tonight? We'll start with the point streak happened when he came back from injury. So right. I got to think that maybe he was playing through a bit of an injury prior to that. So he looks refreshed. He's playing on the second line with Marner and Tavares. So uh, pretty easy to find yourself on the score sheet when you're playing with two guys like that. But moving the puck well, playing second unit power play. He had a really nice goal on the power play the other night. So he's doing a lot of things uh, very, very well. Just taking the puck to the net, making some nice, you can see here, just nice puck protection yeah. to create a play. So a lot of great things from Yarn Croc right now. Definitely. Let's dive a little deeper into this matchup. The Blues are starting a four-game road trip tonight at Scotiabank Arena and coming in off a 5-2 loss to the Minnesota Wild. Um, and, you know, I mentioned earlier in the show, it's only been seven days since we last saw the Leafs take on the Blues. A week ago today, we were talking about this exact same matchup. Um, you know, and it was an eventful game, to say the least. I think we all remember the Leafs saw a two-goal lead slip away in the third period, but they weren't going to let that happen. Fought back and managed to win 5-4 in overtime with that beauty goal from Nylander. Uh, so, Becky, first off, when you meet a team again so quickly in the schedule, how much of the last game do you take into consideration with your game plan the second time around? You know, especially considering last game was the first game back from holiday break. Yeah, you want to make adjustments based on what you've seen, but the big adjustment right now is probably more for St. Louis right. in that they've lost two of their top players in O'Reilly and Tarasenko, both out one with a hand injury, one with a foot injury, and so now they're dealing with that if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs that may impact you a little in terms of some of your matchups but ideally you're not giving it a lot of thought okay. you're going out there and playing them like they are the best best version of themselves I think sometimes in the past the Leafs have gotten into trouble when they've taken teams a little bit lightly and this is a team that's been inconsistent this year they've been inconsistent in scoring so you don't want to take them lightly and give them an opportunity it's a team that they should be able to get two points off of yeah like you said blues having a bit of a tough time stringing together some wins uh in the past couple weeks but one thing that's interesting to note is the blues blue line uh we saw them score seven goals over the team's last five games and also, we've seen head coach Craig Berube shaking up D-line pairings and, you know, really hoping to cut down on opponents, uh, you know, scoring opportunities, which he has to because the Blues are 28th in the league last time I checked in terms of defense, allowing almost four goals per game. So, Becky, can you kind of describe the tone of the Blues coming into the game tonight and what the Leafs need to do uh, to take advantage of it? Well, definitely when you're a team dealing with injury, you want to tighten things up. Right. But you're right, they have been getting some production from their back end. Cal Rosen, a former Toronto Maple Leaf and Toronto Marley, who's on the 2018 Calder Cup winning team here in Toronto. He's one of the guys that's been giving them that production. He's had three goals in the last three games, including a goal against Toronto on the 27th. So you may want to be mindful again of the guy carrying the hot stick yeah. and try to shut that down. But for the most part, again, at the least do what they have been doing very well, which is coming back defensively, taking away time and space. 
they should be fine in their own zone. Perfect. And you know what? Let's talk about goaltending for just a second. We've seen Ilya Samsonov take some shots here at Morning Skate. We um, don't we actually. We just heard that he will be getting a start in tonight's game against the Blues. Actually, had the start last week against St. Louis as well. So that will be something to watch for. You know, Samsonov probably hoping to have extend his great record here on home ice tonight. Yeah, and he did get the start against St. Louis, and they did get the win, but still probably not his best game. So I think he'll be looking for a little bit of redemption here tonight in his first game of 2023. Yeah, well, he's looking good, looking good out there, getting his sweat on, and he is ready for tonight's matchup, as are the rest of the Leafs. And you know what? If you're watching here uh, at Scotiabank Arena, we can't wait to see you. But if you're watching at home, you can catch it on Sportsnet or listen on Fan 590. And uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time puck drop, so get ready. How will you be watching the game, Becky? I am always watching. Always <laughs> watching. Perfect. Well, you know what? I wanted to give a little fun fact to close out the show. Because in 2022, Mitch Marner registered 118 points. And Austin Matthews registered 115 points. Okay, that is the second and third most productive calendar years in Maple Leaf history that is incredible two of those in one single year but uh, i also wanted to give you a little test to see if you knew who held that top spot 121 points and uh you guys at home should guess as well i'll give you a little clue it was registered in 1993. well i love starting my morning off with a quiz good thing i had a big cup of coffee <laughs> 1993 i'm going number 93 in 93 fellow burlingtonian Doug Gilmore. Ah, uh, you're correct. I knew you'd get that one, <laughs> Becky. Uh, yeah, almost 30 years ago, 121 points. That record still stands. Doug Gilmore, pretty amazing. But you know what? Leafs today are coming for it. Austin Matthews having a great 2022. So did Mitch Marner and Keith and the rest of the boys. And they're working to bring that energy into 2023. And that all starts tonight. So I uh, hope you enjoy the game. Thank you for watching. That's all for me. I'm Jacqueline Dory. Becky Keller. And we will talk to you next time. Thanks.